have another mic. I'd like to throw it to Vivian in the... Is that blue or purple? Forgive me, colorblind. Colorblind, the mic is on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I apologize, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Vivian Ethangata, she is Corporate Communications Manager at Safaricom, and she handles influencer management. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to speak to something that we've heard come out here. It hasn't been said clearly, but there seems to be a trend that um, companies and corporates are going to individuals uh, more than established media houses. Would you confirm that? Is there an increased pattern? And what explains it? Um, I think you're good. Okay. Um, I think media in general over the years has evolved, and it also depends on what your objectives are when you're deciding the type of media channels to use. So I don't think it's, it's completely shifted. It, it's based on what your again, or your objectives are. Because at the end of the day, there are still people who think traditional media is the way to go, or that's what you're calling success with regards to PR. And there's still another set of, there's an, a wider audience also on digital as well. So I think it's really important to know who your target audience is and the type of message that you're trying to share out there. That determines the best channel to use. Just to explain to us, what do you go for when you go to Butita? when you choose Claudia, what makes them stand out uh, and you choose them? Is it because he was in a jet the other day and there were many things But what what is the what is the big uh, buy in? Okay. Um I always say this every time I'm in platforms such as this. Yeah. Um, people will always believe what other people say versus what a brand says. Yeah. And that's because at the end of the day, you're, you're more likely to believe an experience a person has had versus what I'm pushing to you through all my ads and all my messaging and stuff like that. So I believe a lot of these content creators, the ones we have in the room and the ones in the digital space, you've all taken time to build an audience. You're authentic in your own way. You tell your message in your own um, kind of voice, whether it's your style, whether it's comedy, or whether it's fashion, whether it's lifestyle, whether you're dancing. So, um, again, when it comes to choosing who it is we want to work with, it's what are we trying to achieve? Yeah. Who are we trying to reach? What kind of style do we want to communicate with? Um, what kind of reach? Are we using a macro influencer, a micro influencer? Are you looking for engagement? Are you looking for awareness? Do I want to use someone with millions of followers like Njugush? Or do I want to use someone who is good at storytelling, for instance, like Wamadai and Katwanya, Rehab? Are we looking for a long format where I want to tell a story and I want you to be able to understand what I'm trying to do because you're telling a story that will end up showing you what, for instance, our purpose, which is transforming lives. I'll use yeah. someone who's doing long form content. If I want to set the record straight without having to use my corporate page, I'll also rely on people who I know can spread that message in a way that is believable in their yeah. own style. So okay. I think those are some of the factors that we consider. And I don't know if there's any reaction to what she has said, and feel free to do that, but uh, I was meant to ask the question to a gentleman who's uh, given this space to many of the faces that I see here, even Jugush has mentioned, and that's Maurice Otieno. I don't know if he's in the building. Or, or he has ghosted us. Maurice, you can feel free to send it to me on, on, um, on, uh, on Gmail. Uh, but uh, if, if not, I'm told Wanjiro can be uh, able to speak to the point that Maurice was uh, able to. Ah, uh, all right. So Wanjiro, uh, Wanjiro, chukua, chukua your mic and tell us, in this speaking to the aspect, umechukua mic kama unakata? Because So, so. Because um, Maurice ideally has given space to many creatives. Uh, but what he's trying to do is really challenge the difficulty that has been uh, in sustaining uh, traditional media and now to um, give people alternative means of funding. Uh, having seen what um, Baraza Media Lab does uh, and also uh, what they look to achieve, how possible is it for someone who can't, doesn't quite have a foot in traditional media, but has some content and has a passion in collaborating in this space. How, how easy is it in a 
yes, how possible it is. It, is it, because you've, you've collaborated in the space as well, and you can speak to that in your own capacity and the body that you represent. Um, okay, thank you for that question. Is that You're good. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay um, <laughs> it is very easy, especially with a community. Like I know right now we are at Baraza, and it is a physical space, but it's not just a physical space. It is also a community, uh, you know, of artists to work together. For example, you've seen that Lupita is a mentor, uh, you know, to Claudia, and that means that he can also be a mentor to other creatives working in, uh, you know, in this space. We also do uh, lunch and learn programs where people are able to learn about branding, about what is talking about financial hy um, hygiene, about what Adele is talking about, keeping your mind safe and things like that. So it's not just developing you as an artist with regard to content, but also developing you as an art, like as, as a wholesome individual. And there are plans to do that. We are also looking to improve on that. But we are big on, on having a community of creators and people working within the media yeah. and media related space. Me, myself, personally, as me, when I came. Kenya, <laughs> Kenya Alice, me, myself. Me, myself, as me, personally. I came into this space as a podcaster who did not even know anything about podcasting. I was with Summerbox, I was the first incubator, uh, you know, at Summerbox. And mm. now I am, you know, doing, you know, like. I think incredible things if I do say so myself yeah. and <laughs> and this is just like you know we all don't have to take the same path but when you have a community and a foot in and you know what you can do then the what is possible becomes almost endless as you continue to unfold yeah. as you continue to trust the process right. and what Adele has said about you walk in but don't walk in to walk out don't walk in you come out you don't believe in yourself and also believe that the community you're in is also a community that will uplift you. And that is what we are working on as Baraza <coughs> and also as Semabox, you know, with their incubator um, and every program within Baraza. Yeah. Is, yeah. You echo something, and if someone can bring a mic to uh, Mushiri here seated next to me, uh, <laughs> just so that he doesn't fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> um, and this is to the question of, you know, the new tax regime. And you can speak to that and how you feel that will affect uh, the Finance Act. But even from what Wanjiro said, Adele has said earlier, yeah. we have spoken to the fact that we need more people in this sector and in this space. I like that about the digital economy. Yeah. Amco, um, in, with that poise of, no, 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 we are full, we are saturated. Yeah. There's enough for everyone. Yeah. Uh, there's someone who can speak about you know, her being a mom, her journey of mm -hmm. being a mom. There's someone who can speak about you know, hair care for bald men. Um, I, I know him, that's why I'm picking on him. But there's something for everyone and there's an audience out there. And I like that. You've spoken to it. We need as many people to have a bigger, stronger voice within this space. But Moshiri. Can uh, I just speak to community? Community. Uh, it's such an Onge. important point Onge. on community. We we can't call ourselves an industry if we don't know who is in the industry. Okay. So spaces like this are so important. For example, when we went into COVID and the government said, it's a huge scandal that I think, we'll, I don't know when it'll break, that they were going to give people in the creative economy money. My first question was, who are these people? Because where's the database, right? So communities are important for us to know who is in there, one. Two, if we want to unionize, we can unionize because we know yeah. who these people are. Three, how do we hold um, the governing bodies accountable or how do we engage with them for policy change? We can't do it as one one. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yep. So spaces like this are so important for community for us to, I'm not starting a revolution, we're not taking <laughs> down anyone, Manda Manu, but like to, <laughs> to, for us to know who we are, you know? I, I just felt when you say well, you do have a track record for revolutions <laughs> you know, not too so long ago <laughs> <in> France. <laughs> go for it uh, but yeah and, and feel free to also respond to it on how you feel because you're also a content creator um, and hey, I've, I've seen your, your new songs and up up, up uh, on oh, YouTube yeah. well done oh, well done you. well done thank um, you Mike Mishiri everyone so anyway, how do you see the new tax regime affecting? Are you worried? Um, um, have you already started making adjustments? Perhaps how you quote uh, to, to prospective clients uh, like Vivian over there? Um, Make it yeah, all the obviously, closer. obviously you, have to, you have to change. Uh, but I thought my first question would be easy. So... Um. <laughs> <laughs> You could sing, get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I've been in a similar space where influencers, uh, we were previously discussing about the 15, the, the, the suggested 15% mm -hmm. from the uh, normal 5%. And we're saying um, 
it would be if it was implemented the implement the implementation would be a bit premature because the creators have just we've just started establishing ourselves like we've just, just yeah we've just arrived <laughs> yeah like no we've just we've just begun you know like um getting good money out of content creation <coughs> so introducing the taxes the crazy taxes because 15 percent five percent to 15 percent that's 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 really crazy uh it would be kind of premature but thank god it's still five percent but but still uh the taxes because you're being taxed left right center taxes in a panda too unafungwa to twitter you don't even want to open twitter in the morning because <laughs> maybe i use twitter in the morning as a newspaper because you know so unafungwa to twitter on up to up a new tax has been introduced a, 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 an existing tax has been raised by what percentage you know like i what's gonna happen and it's obviously gonna affect affect us uh directly uh as uh content creators and even as influencers because now um we're gonna quote higher you know because uh i mean everything come tax in a panda everything in a panda yeah. if you will uh every single product so that means at our way and on a bay and on a bay so if you're previously quoting <laughs> if you're previously quoting a certain amount uh you know you have to you have to you have to now up quote you have to yeah. na ongeza uh ama kama auko na ongeza withholding tax now you unaambia agency <laughs> or even the client if the client is approaching you directly you know i have to you know you have to sort the withholding tax because you see the taxes and everything mm -hmm. and it's also going to affect you know like the whole creative economy in kenya because you know agencies or agencies or even brands may opt to 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 use the traditional ways ways of uh marketing and yep. advertising tvcs billboards and all that kind of stuff for say hey, influencers are making too expensive let's just throw, uh, drop them for now or even they even drop you meet we want to come here eh that quote man <laughs> it's just too high uh and we've decided to go with a cheaper influencer yeah. you get yeah. so um it's 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 definitely <laughs> affecting us directly all right yeah and you've just you've said you just got started mm -hmm. when did you start i mean you exploding mm -hmm. on tiktok mean me kuona through safarico nime kusikia through safarico uh, my uh, boss is safarico makwa kwa kwa oh quote me change well but yeah <laughs> But yes, I mean, when did you start? Like tell us about you know. You know, uh my journey is very it's very funny and I love telling it because I never pictured myself uh to be where I am today, to be in the creative space because I was I was I was a bookworm. I was my my goal was just to be in school, do my bachelor's, apply for so many scholarships and go and do my masters abroad. That was always my that was always my 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 thing, yeah. Cuz I did biomedical science, I can see a few hold people up, whom we Hold up. Yeah. You did what? I did biomedical science. Uh, medical science. Biomedical Computer science. Biomedical science. Computer stuff like in it. No no shit, no shit, no so shit. And he's 20 23. I'm 25. 25. Yeah, 25. 25 yeah. Now. yeah. So I well did biomedical done. science. Uh, Makofi, 25, 25, 25. <laughs> so I I started content creation when while well, I was in year 2. I was in my second year. Yeah. And I I started as a hobby. You okay. know, I, actually the the first video I did Sick one expected to go as viral as it did. Yeah. Uh and my platform then was Facebook. Me I was big on Facebook by the way. <laughs> eh, me I, I had audience here, guys uh from their late 30s, 50s, 60s and you all wanna watch content on Facebook. So the first video I posted on Facebook it went viral 200k views. Um and then I got into Instagram and I was like, "Oh, this is a thing I can do." That was in 2018. Yeah. And then in 2019 I as 2019 commenced, I I realized, you know, my grades Dico down in the gutter you know <laughs> i have to cuz cuz you know that was always my aim oh. my my aim was always you know i have to be in school go and do my masters and even after i did i completed my fourth year i was about to do my masters in global health advocacy and policy policy Hi. making uh, my <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. advocacy yeah, so um 2020 <laughs> yeah. actually funny enough 2020 was the year that I started I I I, I worked with a few brands in 2018 mm. while I had just commenced and uh, and started getting like good viewership on social media uh that was in 2018 but in 2020 was when I 2020 Keisha mid from August ish I uh, was when like I started like now getting good clients yeah. and you know like creating content for certain brands that I never thought I would work with uh and then 2021 was a very good year for me 2022 I won an award 
our digital media awards 2023. <laughs> I mean, it, it's the Lord. <laughs> but now, it, so uh, my journey has been very, you know, and now I'm uh, I'm currently, you know, I was like masters. Mm, hell no. Yeah. I I put that aside. Now I'm pursuing something completely different. And um, you are the master of your destiny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, the ma- I'm the master of my destiny. So currently, I would say I'm a full-time content creator. Like that's wow. what pay my, that's what pay my, pays my bills. I'm a full-time content creator. And but uh, guys like Akina Putita and Jagush, they inspire us so much. You know, like I'm in a space where uh, okay. I, I, I swear, like I watched all the episodes on Jagush on YouTube on on um, uh, uh, a certain a certain guy who hosts celebs and yeah. you know they talk about their journey and it was very inspiring <coughs> i would say right now i'm in a space where i'm working with brands i'm just getting money but did you can pesa and claudia Ish. said yes. Yes. no msione kama ni pesa mingi by the way and claudia said claudia said that um if there's one thing influencers or creators need is financial <coughs> advisors Right. Because the culture in Kenya is uh, influencers start getting money and they, they, they want to show people that any means like Patapesa. They move on a Tokathika road, Kama Butita, Kwadenda Kilimani, you see? Uh, Want to upgrade from uh, Futsubishi, they get a uh, Mitsubishi, you get. I'm mm. just <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so uh, I, I do heavily, I heavily, heavily agree to, uh, in regards to what Claudia said, that we do need financial advisors. And what what Jugush and Butita are doing, are establishing their their own things on the side, you know, doing their tours in Australia, SBM yeah. bars, it's really inspiring. And it makes you just sit back and think, you know, uh, I have to like look for something else. I'm not gonna be forever, you know, like working with brands and doing that three uh, the two minutes video, the one minute video. I'm not gonna forever do that. You see, so yeah, th- yeah. I'm gonna let you say hi to mom. My mom. You know how you do it. Oh, Straight oh, to the camera, right there, oh, right there. Oh, like that's a long way yeah. to ask Kama Naishi Kwao Bali. Naishi solo and single. Yeah. Naib, naib, uh, that's not necessary. <laughs> so I'm saying, wait, I'm saying hi to my mom. Well, you know, to in character. My, oh, in character, yeah, in character. Oh, oh this is my cannon. Yeah. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the wig is it's like the the thing that really like makes me switch up. So, Ukinia and Bia, you are well dressed TV, yeah. and then I speak like my mommy. Tell your mom who's gonna pay so Jim Aluta Pelek. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, where? By the way, MC, he he nini nina wapi? It's a fikia mom. It's a fikia. Yeah. Lipa madeni. Anyway, anyway, um, oh yes, and, and on, this is a social newsroom, so hashtag social newsroom, hashtag TSNR Africa, and Maurice Utiena is in the building, ladies and gentlemen, and a mic will come your way, a mic will come your way, a mic will come your way, just pass 